Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool for here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and build the Supermarine Scimitar. The Supermarine Scimitar was a single seat naval strike aircraft designed and produced by the British aircraft manufacturer Supermarine, operated exclusively by the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm. It was the final aircraft to be entirely designed and manufactured by Supermarine. The Scimitar was developed out of an earlier effort initially designated the Type 505, an undercarriage less fighter aircraft intended to be flown from rubber decks. Much of the aircraft's features, including its unorthodox V-tail or butterfly tail, and its thin straight wing were shared with its ancestor. However, they abruptly reconsidered uh, the requirements and specified a conventional undercarriage to be used. Accordingly, Supermarine produced the closely related Type 508, equipped with a large wing and retractable undercarriage. On August 31st, 19 1951, the Type 508 performed its main flight, and it was closely followed by the redesigned Type 529 and the Type 544, the latter serving as the direct prototype for production model, making its first flight in January 1956. During 1957, the first production aircraft were delivered, enabling the Scimitar to enter service with the Royal Navy during the following year. The aircraft was operated by the Royal Navy as a low-level strike aircraft, which included potentially being armed with nuclear weapons having been superseded as a fighter even prior to its introduction by other aircraft such as the, ha the uh, de Havilland Sea Venom and the de Havilland Sea Vixen. It experienced a relatively high attrition rate due to a spate of accidents. Towards its later years of operation, the type was frequently used as an aerial refueling tanker. During 1969, the Scimitar was permanently withdrawn, having been replaced in service by the newer, more capable air aircraft such as the Blackburn Buccaneer. So yeah, the Scimitar here, um, one of those aircraft that was developed in, I would say, the relatively early Cold War and was phased out very quickly as technology greatly, was greatly improved and the aircraft just kind of became um, needless, to say the very say. Um, it was uh, almost only served about 12 years in the um, armed forces of um, the United Kingdom. So very interesting, uh, very short career. Um, but a pretty cool little aircraft and kind of gives me some Harrier vibes um, and definitely looks a little bit like a Harrier um, And you'll see here as we kind of go through it a little bit further um, Take a look at it. It's definitely got some Harrier vibes, especially with the fuselage um, But overall really cool looking uh, Aircraft and should be a fun one to add. It's been a while since you've done a British jet aircraft and happy to finally revisit um, the uh, British here and build them a Nice kind of Cold War era jet. Now before we go and jump into this tutorial, I do want to go and give special links to Patreon support Dirt Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a video career request of your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is really greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is in the video description. With that though, let's go and dive in here to taking a look at the Supermarine Skimitar. So, getting started with, we have uh, basically the aircraft in a two color scheme. So, it's got a white underbelly and it's kind of like this off blue, uh, kind of bluish gray type color up on top here. Um, unfortunately, we can't get it perfect uh, to what the color it was, but this is kind of like the closest I felt I could get it. Um, there are some versions of the aircraft as well that are kind of more of a navy blue top. So, that is also an option for you guys if you'd rather do that. But this is the color that seems to kind of be with the early. Uh, Cold War variants um, or the early uh, production versions were with this kind of pale very pale kind of grayish blue um, We do have the black tip nose a little uh, device that sticks up the front here. Uh, we have the cockpit So pretty straightforward the massive intakes for um, the jet engine on or jet engines on both sides and it's got a pretty relatively flat spine um, not a whole lot going on here in, um, on the aircraft uh, as you approach the tail we've got the tail we have the horizontal stabilizers, and then we also have the wings here. For uh, loadout, we have these uh, missiles here, which I believe are anti-ship missiles, these larger ones, and then we have these kind of smaller rockets here um, located on the aircraft, I imagine more for like a ground strike type role. Um, so those are just kind of the loadouts we based it off of. Um, this was specifically requested by patron supporter uh, Derek frost Westbrook to have this loadout, so that's what we went ahead and did, um, and it's kind of based off a worth under loadout. Um, anyways, though, that right there is pretty much it for the overview for this aircraft. We do have a landed version, as you can see in front of us, and we also have the in-flight version. So you will be able to build both by the end of this tutorial and be able to fit it on your carriers or 
fit it on your bases, landed, or having it flying above your fleet um, in the flying configuration. Anyways, though, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, going ahead and moving into your first uh, layers here. We're going to be going ahead and actually begin with layers one and two. Now, we're starting with layer two here in layer one because we get a better basis kind of established for layer two. Uh, rather than what we have kind of going for us for layer one, which is really just kind of doing the um, Missiles on our hard points. So we're gonna go ahead and basically do both these layers together Now if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, so by like to start these tutorials like to do half on camera half off What this means is we're gonna be building the entire center line of the aircraft and then the right side And then it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side For the most part this aircraft is completely symmetrical. So whatever we do on one side will be done to the other and um, Should be pretty straightforward and Pretty easy once we get for the first few layers and get a better understanding of what we're doing um, also in addition if you do want to build the landed version you will need to make sure that you um, build this a certain height off the ground now we will be building the aircraft without the landing gear to begin with and then we'll be adding the land gear at the end as a modification to the in-flight version so to go ahead and do the landing gear it's pretty simple you're gonna to need to make sure that you have uh, basically three blocks you're gonna build basically a column of three blocks here and you're gonna start your second layer here where this third block is. So you can see we have our iron trap doors coming off of it, and that's where we're gonna go ahead and start building this layer, which is layer number two for the build. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you go ahead and build this, make sure that count is good and you are good to go and all that stuff, because if you build it too high or too low, obviously it's not gonna sit right when you go to put the vanity gear on it. So anyways, after that's done, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and place down two iron trap doors like this. And you can see they're on the top portion of the block. So this is the top side and not on top like that. We're gonna go and then place down a uh, smooth quartz top slab, then a birchwood fence post, then three quartz top slabs, a narrow birchwood fence post, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, smooth quartz top slabs back, and then two iron trap doors. And that right there is gonna make your center line. Now, throughout the build, I will be mentioning quartz. If I, when I say quartz, I do mean smooth quartz. Smooth quartz is a lot better of a block to use for this build just because it's a lot smoother. It doesn't have those harsh lines that the regular quartz does. So please make sure you use smooth quartz. It's just going to look a lot better overall in the end. Unless I specifically tell you guys to use quartz, um, full or just use normal quartz, but that shouldn't be um, a thing in this tutorial. Anyways, though, go ahead and get started with fear. We're going to go ahead and go to the second iron trap door. We're going to place down iron trap door at the side of that, followed by one back, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 quartz top sides back from that. We're going to go then place down two iron trap doors. After that, we're going to place down an iron trap door, come off the side of this one here. Then we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 iron trap doors. So you basically should have something that looks like this here for the base for the fuselage. When you have that all done, we're going to go ahead and then take our uh, just some random blocks, so blocks that you can tell apart from the build. So I'll just use yellow concrete because it's an easy block to tell apart. We're gonna go ahead and go to the third from last iron trap door on this outer row, and we're gonna build two blocks out to the side. So again, just two blocks like so. And it's that third iron trap door from last. So you have one, two, three. We're gonna go ahead and place down an iron trap door here, smooth quartz full block, and then another iron trap door to the side of it. On the back of this quartz block, we're gonna place down a direct wall, and then going forward from it, we're gonna place down two smooth quartz blocks forward as well as two birchwood fence gates, so one, two, and then a skeleton skull here on the very tip of this fence gate. We're also going to go and drop down from these iron trap doors. We're going to place down one more additional iron trap door going down like that on both sides. We can also delete these blocks as we do not need them anymore that we're connecting our uh, missile here uh, to the fuselage. So we'll just delete those blocks. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and do these uh, little, these smaller missiles here on the sides. This is going to be started with a fence gate coming off the side of this trap door here, and then an air fence gate underneath it coming off this trap door. We're going to open these fence gates toward the front, and we're going to build two more that go back from those, like so, and again, open those toward the front. And then coming off these fence gates here, same thing, two fence gates, and open those toward the forward um, facing of the aircraft. We're going to go then place down wither skeleton skulls on the side of those fence gates, and once we have that done, that is going to basically make those uh, missiles there on the side. Not a perfect design form, but they kind of are just what we have uh, just due to the limited size that we're working with here. And that is pretty much it for this layer. Now, one quick thing I do want to go ahead and also mention is um, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and do one extra feature here for our missile here just to kind of give a little bit more detail. And what this is going to, is going to evolve is doing the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stake by pressing tab. It should fill, should autofill, and we can 
press enter and we'll get our debug stick here. Now this is going to be a Java only feature. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you will not be able to do this feature just due to um, not having the debug stick here. But this is a good little uh, trick for us to do on Java just to get a little more detail here for this missile. What we're going to do here is on both sides of this skeleton skull, we're going to place down a temporary block. Followed by a tripwire hook come off the sides of those blocks. We'll then left click the tripwire hook until we get selected facing. It should say a direction pop up and that direction is all dependent on which direction your aircraft is facing. And then right clicking it, we can actually go ahead and rotate these um, tripwire hooks so that they look like they connect up to the fence gate and it just kind of helps with our little stabilizers there on the missile itself. Not a perfect design, but it just adds a little bit more to it and I think looks pretty decent. So that's what we have going on there. Anyways though, once you have that all complete, that is going to wrap up everything there is for layer 2 and layer 1. Taking a look at it from above this, which we should have for the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving up to our next layer, which will be layer number 3. Moving on up to our next layer, we have layer number 3. For layer 3 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a smooth quartz block on top of this iron trap door right here. So right on top of this one, we're going to then go forward with one more block. And then if you're on Java, we're going to place down an upside down piston. If you're not on Java, we'll place down a quartz upside down stair, which will sit like so. We're going to go then place down a quartz top slab coming off that block like so, and that's going to make your front nose there for the time being. Going back from this quartz block here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a long row of smooth quartz. This row in total is going to be 13 blocks. If we take all the whole total all the way up to this piston, or the stair, whichever you placed, that is going to be a total of 15 quartz blocks. We're going to go and then place down two blocks of netherite, or sorry, three blocks of netherite, then two quartz full blocks, a stone brick slab, a dark oak with fence gate, and then a narrow stone brick top slab coming off that fence gate. We're going to go and then skip one, two, three spaces back, and then we're going to place down a birch with fence gate like so, and we're going to open it toward the front of the aircraft, so that way there. With that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and continue on by going to the sides here. We're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of the piston or the upside down stair, whichever you placed, followed by a white stained glass pane. After that, we're going to go then place down a smooth quartz upside down stair like so, and then a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 quartz blocks, followed by a block of netherite, 1, 2, polished black stone walls, a diorite wall, and then one, two, white stained glass panes back from those from that wall. Going back up to the front here again, we're going to place down a black concrete block on top of this iron trap door here. We're going to go and then place down an iron trap door <clears throat> coming off this block, going forward, like so. And then we want to go and then go back from the block with quartz full blocks. And this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. For this section here, we're going to place down an orange stained glass block like so for the engines there. Unfortunately, due to the structure of the wings and just this area in general, we really can't do like glowstone. Um, in this area, it just doesn't really work um, too well, so we just have the orange stained glass there to show that the engines are on. If you do want to have the engines look like they're off, you can also use black concrete instead to kind of create that void effect. Um, so again, just kind of is up to you guys whether you want the engines off or on. Probably for your landed versions, you're going to want the engines off, so you use black concrete instead of the orange stained glass. If you want the engines to look like they're on, you can use the orange stained glass. Again, kind of up to you guys and what you want to do there. Anyways though, after that is all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then progress out to the sides here like so. Now, for this section, it kind of depends again on what version you're on. So again, for Java players, we'll be using our debug stick here in this situation. But what we're going to do here is we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off these two this black concrete block and this iron trap door here. Now you usually need a redstone signal to close these, however <clears throat> on Java we can go ahead and left click until we get selected open, it should say false, in parentheses, and we'll just right click and it should say open it true and it will lay those trap doors flat against the side there. As an alternative you can use birchwood trap doors um, instead, those will also work in replacement of these iron trap doors. We're also going to go ahead and go to the same and do the same thing back here. So we're going to place down an iron trap door, come off this orange stained glass block or black concrete, whichever you placed. Two iron trap doors, one come off the glass block or black concrete block, and then the iron trap door. And then we're going to use our same thing, our debug stick there, to close those, or lay those trap doors flat along the side. Now again, you can go ahead and choose the option to, um, you know, use birchwood trap doors as an alternative. To go ahead and continue on, we're going to go ahead and count our smooth quartz on the side. We're going to go one, two, three, and our fourth one, we're going to place down an iron trap door to the side of that. We're going to go ahead and then take our quartz top slabs, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two iron trap doors. We're going to place down our iron trap door here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then another iron trap door on the end. After that, we're going to place down an iron trap door, come off this slab here, 
one, two, three, four, five slabs back, and then an iron trap door. We're going to place down an iron trap door right here, except now we have our missiles, so we have our first hard point that we're going to go and do. So for our first uh, pylon here, we're going to place down a white stained glass pane after that trap door, and then we're going to go and go back with one, two, eight uh, direct walls, like so. We then want to place down a quartz top slab, like so, and then we're going to place down two iron trap doors that go back from that top slab. Our next row, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off that glass pane there, and then one, two, three, and four quartz top slabs back, and then another iron trap door there on the very end. After that, we're going to place down a iron trap door here coming off this quartz top slab. Then we're going to go ahead and place down a white stained glass pane, then two direct walls back, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down two iron trap doors back from that wall. Our next row here is going to be an iron trap door coming off this glass pane. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of quartz top slabs, so one, two, and three. And then we want to go ahead and then place down one iron trap door on the end here. Our next row is going to be an iron trap door coming off this quartz top slab. Then we're going to place down one and two quartz uh, top slabs back. And then we're going to place down a row of two of iron trap doors. Our last row here, we're going to go ahead and go off this last iron trap door. We're going to place down an iron trap door. And then we're going to go ahead and go one and two more forward. So you have a row of three like that. After that's done, you're going to go ahead and take what we do on the right side, copy it over to the left side, and this is what it should look like from the top down view. So you can kind of see the bases of our wings set up here and our fuse slots starting to come together a little bit. But yeah, again, this is what you want for the top down view. At this point in time, also, I would recommend building both sides. And once you have both sides complete, um, go ahead and uh, unpause the video. Um, so I'll give you a moment here to pause it. And yeah, there we go. So hopefully at this point in time, you built both sides. And we're going to talk about one slight difference here. And that's going to be over here on the left side. The left side's really straightforward. It's really barely even a difference if you want to consider it. But it's only going to be located on the left side here. And we're going to go ahead and go to this section here. So we have our two quartz top slabs, this iron trap door. We're going to build an end rod that comes off of it and then a chain. So just this little device that sticks out the left wing. And again, that's going to be on the left wing only. Um, and that's really about it. So pretty straightforward there. Nothing too crazy. One thing I also want to go ahead and talk about for Java players is the use of the debug stick here again. We can go ahead and change the properties of this glass pane um, and actually extend the glass pane in directions toward the stair and toward the skull to kind of make this area look a little bit more filled in. And to do this, we'll go ahead and press F3, and we can see that our aircraft here are looking this way. We have a facing of north. You can look in your second paragraph there. That fourth line is going to tell you what direction or what cardinal direction you're looking. So that way's north, and then that way's south. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and go to this glass pane. We can left click it until we get selected, and it should say north false. By right clicking it, it will actually extend that glass pane in that north direction. So that way. We'll go ahead and click it again, it should come up with selected false, and we'll go or south. Um, and then we'll go ahead and set that to true, and it'll go toward the skeleton skull here. So kind of a cool way to kind of make this area look a little bit more filled in. And also we can go to the stair here, left click it until we get selected shape, and we can actually go ahead and edit it until we get this corner stair. Um, and again, that kind of makes it look a lot better there, kind of shaping wise, and you can do the same thing there on both sides. Again, not, a, not something that's game breaking if you don't do it, but um, it's definitely a nice way to kind of make the design look a little bit better, at least in my opinion. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude everything there is there for layer number three, and with that, we'll be moving on to layer number four. All right, guys, so moving into our next layer here, we have layer number four. Layer four here is where we start to get into kind of our blue um, color here, so we're going to be going ahead and kind of transitioning our block palette um, over to this kind of bluer color. Now, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and begin with by going ahead and placing down a black concrete block that kind of goes up from this quartz top slab at an angle like so. And we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on the very tip of it. We're going to go then go back from that with two of these light blue terracotta blocks. We're going to go and then place down a row of five of black concrete. Now, this right here is going to be used to close off the cockpit so we don't have like a void on the inside here. You can very simply also leave the space of five open and do an interior for the cockpit if you want. Um, but for our build here in the sake of tutorial, we're just going to fill this in with black concrete. Anyways, after those five blocks, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of light blue terracotta. That's going to go back a total of 21 blocks, and it should end right before this fence gate. So it should look like this here for your center line. So just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and work our way out to the sides now. We're going to place down a cyan um, stained glass pane here, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down two prismarine walls. We're going to go ahead and then place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 
of our light blue terracotta, then one, two, three prismarine walls, and one, two, three um, cyan stained glass panes. After that's all complete, we want to go ahead and then go back up to the front up here. We're going to go ahead and grab our item frames, and we're going to place down two item frames on the side of this wall here and the side of this first blue terracotta block. In those item frames, we're going to place down red concrete. So one and two, we're going to go ahead and then rotate them at angles so they look like this, so they're kind of pointing upwards, look like diamonds. And then if uh, you're on Java, we can also go ahead and go the extra mile by placing down warp signs on the side there of those two blocks. Now just taking just a little side note there, the signs and item frames can only be placed together in the same block space if you're on Java. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you'll not be able to do this feature, but not a big deal, you can just go ahead and place down the item frames and disregard the signs. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down a warp trap door here, and then a warp trap door come out the side of it, and we're going to have that closed like so. We also want to go ahead and place down a black concrete block here, with a warp trap door on the side of it, and again closed on its side. We're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 light blue terracotta blocks back, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4 of these warp stairs, and then a warp slab on the very end there. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and kind of start to move into our wing section. For this, we're going to need warp trap doors, some uh, daylight detectors, and also some cyan carpet. For these, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a warp trap door here. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, and six daylight detectors. We're going to go ahead and turn these all to the night mode by going ahead and switch them to this kind of bluish gray. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a warp trap door, and then a cyan carpet after that. Our next row is going to be another warp trap door here in the front. This is going to be followed by one, two, three, and four uh, daylight detectors. We're going to turn these to night mode. And we then want to place down one and two warp trap doors and a cyan carpet. Again, our next row here is going to be a warp trap door. On the front here, two daylight detectors, turn those to night mode. We're going to go and then place down a row three of warp trap doors and then another cyan carpet. After that, we're going to place down a cyan carpet up here. Then one, two, three, four, five warp trap doors. And then a sign carpet on the end there. Once we have that done, we're going to place down an air sign carpet here. One, two, three, four trap doors. And then an air sign carpet on the end. Place down a sign carpet here. Then we're going to place down one and two warp trap doors. And then one, two, three sign carpet. At this point in time, we'll just take our sign carpet and just cover up the rest of the quartz top slabs and iron trap doors to go ahead and fill out the rest of our wing. Once we have that all done, that's pretty much it for this layer. Take a look at it from above, this we should have for the top down view with that all complete. At this point in time, I would also like to go ahead and show you guys how to make this banner. So it's a pretty simple design. I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials to make it. And um, with that, we'll uh, make this banner here for the little roundel on the side of the aircraft. Alright guys, so moving into making these banners, they're really simple to make really and only require you to have some white uh, banners, some blue dye, some red dye, and four white dye. So again, two blue dye, two red dye, four white dye, and two white banners, so we can go ahead and make these banners. So we're going to go ahead and start off by going into our loom, we're going to place our white banners and our blue dye. We're going to go ahead and do the border of blue, like it's going to go all the way around, and we're going to go ahead and do this for both banners. After that's done, we're going to place down each banner back into our loom for our red dye, and for each one, we're going to go ahead and do this vertical line. Um, one's going to be on the left side, so like so, and the other is going to be on the right side. So just like this, and you have these two banners here. Both these banners will be placed into the loom again with our white dye. Now, what we're going to do here is our red line is on our right side. So we're going to go ahead and do the bottom right hand corner, just kind of square there. And then we want to go ahead and then do the top right hand corner. So you create this kind of first half here of the banner, or of our uh, randle here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a, or the other banner in. And since this line's on the left side, we're going to go into the bottom left hand corner, and then the top left hand corner, like so. With that all complete, we can go ahead and then put our banners here on the side of the aircraft and very simply they're going to be placed on these two uh, light blue terracotta blocks and they're going to be facing toward each other so the red is connected or looks like it's connected and that right there is pretty much it for that uh, roundel and that right there is going to wrap up everything we have there for um, layer number um, for the build and with that let's go ahead and move on up to layer number five. All right guys so moving on to layer five one quick thing I want to mention uh before we go ahead and do though is that on the bottom here we have this piston from layer number three we actually can go ahead and take our debug stick here now and left click it until we get selected extended false pop up and then by right clicking that piston we can actually get rid of that wood portion and what that helps us do is kind of help angle the front there a little bit better kind of improves our shaping so that's really all we have going on for that and i just want to mention that for the java players that did place the piston 
Anyways though, uh, go ahead and continue on. We're going to go ahead and then place down a warp trap door on top of this first light blue terracotta block up here in the front. We're going to follow it up with a warped slab and then one, two, three, four, and five black stained glass full blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a piston like so, followed by a warped slab, then a uh, warped fence post, then one, two, three warped slabs. Then again, uh, we're going to place down two pistons. And one quick thing, as an alternative to the piston, you can also place down a light blue terracotta block. Um, that would also work in this situation, or a warped stair, whichever you prefer and think looks best. Um, so again, that's an option there. And then for this back kind of tail section here, probably your best bet here is going to be using blue terracotta, f or the light blue terracotta full blocks you've been using. Um, obviously, these pistons here are going to be the best block to use, but unfortunately, you know, again, it's going to be something we're going to be using our debug stick here for to go ahead and kind of modify the properties of. So, um, you know, your experiences may vary depending on your, what version you're on again so for java we'll place down two pistons if you're on a different version you can place down your two light blue terracotta blocks then we're gonna place down a polished black stone wall and then we're gonna place down one two three four five of these pistons back or again those light blue terracotta if you are placing the light blue terracotta i would recommend not placing the polished black stone wall and instead placing down another blue terracotta block here just because it's going to look a little bit better with your build and will make a little bit more sense when we get to that part but uh, yeah, again, so um, that right there is kind of the alternative. Then after those blocks there, so after these five blocks, you're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Light blue terracotta should connect, should connect all the way to this last block here. Coming off that block, we're going to place down a light or a cyan stained glass pane. And then two iron trap doors come off that glass pane. We then want to go ahead and go to the side of this first iron trap door. We're going to place down one trap door like so. Then one, two, three, four, forward. So you have a total of five. We're going to go ahead and then place down one come off this one, and then three forwards, so you have a row of four. We're going to go ahead and then go off the second iron trap door here, one, two, three, and four back. And then we're going to go and then place down one, two, three, and then one, two. So basically finish off, finishes just like that. After that's all done, uh, we're going to go and then go back up to the front here. We're going to place down a black stained glass pane come off this block, followed by two narrow brick walls back, one, two, black stained glass panes back, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Sorry, we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 of these warp slabs back. So that right there will kind of uh, create the spine here or the top of the aircraft. We're going to go then grab our um, cyan carpet. We're going to place down a cyan carpet on top of this trap door here. And then we're going to go back with warp trap doors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 warp trap doors back like so. And after we have this all complete, we can go ahead then for our Java players, take our debug stick here, go to each one of these pistons and just right click it to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion on top there. And that right there is pretty much all we have there for um, layer number five. So pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, with that, we'll probably just go ahead and jump into our final layers here, which will basically finish off the tail and the top of the canopy and pretty much wrap up our in-flight version of the build. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, so moving into our final layers here, we have layers six through nine. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this black stained glass block. Just like so, we're going to turn this to the night mode. We're going to go ahead and place down an Arabic slab back from that, followed by another daylight detector. So you have that there for the front. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down a wither skeleton skull that's going to go on top of this polished black stone wall or your third uh, light blue terracotta block, whichever you place there. Now we're going to go ahead and then place down a end rod that's going to come off this um, this uh, wither skeleton skull. The problem is though, when you do place it, it's going to cause these trap doors to uh, re kind of or these sorry these pistons kind of re-piston I guess so they do get that wood portion back so you just want to go and take your debug stick there again if applicable and just kind of reset them like so anyways though that's it for that whole front section and we're gonna go ahead and move back to our tail on the second light blue terracotta block right here we're gonna place down a warp trap door uh four by a warp slab and then one two three four of these light blue terracotta blocks and then a prismarine wall here on the end we're going to go ahead and place down, uh, going up from the second light blue terracotta block, another light blue terracotta block, followed by a second, third, and fourth back, so it ends on top of that wall. We're going to go ahead and go up for the second block from the front here, place down a block on top, then one, two back, so you have a total of three, and then a light, uh, or sorry, a cyan stained glass paint on the back there. And then lastly, we're going to go ahead and go on top of the last, or the second um, uh, light blue terracotta block there, place down a warp slab on top blue terracotta block back and then a prismarine wall on the end there so it creates this tail here like so in addition going ahead and going off of this prismarine wall here we're going to place down two pistons 
Um, alternatives to the pistons, you can go ahead and use prism ring walls, so you can just place down a row of two prism ring walls instead. But for us, we'll be using the pistons, and if you do place the pistons, we're gonna, and actually for both versions, with the pi two pistons with the two walls, you're gonna place down the skeleton skull on the end. And then we're gonna place down our two, or we can, do, can then take our debug stick here, and if there's pistons, we can go ahead and uh, activate them like so. Um, and, and one quick thing here is that we do want to place a warp trap door here. This will cause the pistons to turn back. So we'll go and just do it one more time and we'll, they'll be good to go. We don't have to worry about those anymore. Anyways, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and go off this warp trap door. We're going to go ahead and go forward another um, couple blocks, so like so. And we then want to go ahead and place down um, a row of one, two, three, and four right next to it. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, and two cyan carpet. And then the remaining iron trap doors, we're just going to go ahead and cover with carpet like so. Uh, additionally, one last thing I want to cover here also is going to be the addition of some birchwood buttons. This would say Royal uh, Navy on the side here, but obviously it's too small of a space to really write that. So we're going to very simply just place down three birchwood buttons to, you know, very, uh, you know, very stretchly uh, resemble Royal uh, Navy there written on the side of the aircraft. Anyway, so that right there is going to complete uh, the design there for the in-flight version of the uh, Supermarine Scimitar. And at this point in time, we'll be going ahead and moving into adding our landing gear for those of you that do want to build the landed version. So with that, that's it for the in-flight version. Let's move on to the landing gear. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our landing gear. We're going to start off our first front landing gear. For this, we're going to go ahead and go to this section down here. It's going to be these two iron trap doors and this quartz, quartz top slab down the center. We're going to delete the two iron trap doors and the quartz top slab. We're going to go ahead and then delete these two quartz full blocks. And in their place, we're going to place down a stone top slab here and then a stone brick up downstairs here. Going down from the stonebrick top side, we're going to place down a stonebrick wall. Then a stonebrick up down stair like so. And then going down from the stonebrick stair at an angle, we're going to place down a block of coal. We then want to go ahead and place down our birchwood fence key here. And we're open this up toward the stonebrick wall like so. And we're also going to place down a white banner coming off the stonebrick wall here on the front for the landing gear door. At this point in time, we also have this banner design that we'll be using. Now this banner design is really simple. It's a light gray banner with a black border and a black horizontal line for the center. Really simple. I'm not going to show you guys how to make it in the loom just because it's only two steps and pretty self-explanatory what we did. But this right here is just going to go and go. It's just going to go on both sides of this block of coal, and that's really about it. Once we have that done, we also want to grab a lever. We're going to place down a lever here, come off the side of this block of coal toward the front there, and that is going to make your front landing gear wheel. Pretty simple stuff, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our rear landing gear. Moving into our rear landing gear, we have a pretty simple design also in the back here. This is going to be going ahead and going to this section right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go off of this wall right here. So we have this direct wall um, for our first kind of pylon here. We're going to go ahead and delete the quartz top side right next to it on the inside here. So between the pylon and the fuselage. And we're going to, in its place, place down an upside down quartz stair. We're going to go ahead and then place down an iron trap door coming down from that quartz stair. And if you're on Java, again, we'll be using our debug stick here um, to cause the trap door to open. So we're going to have it set like this, so it comes down flat. If you, again, are not on Java, a alternative to this would be um, a birchwood trap door instead. Behind this, we're going to go ahead and delete this quartz top slab here. We're going to place down a stone brick wall in its place, and then a second stone brick wall that comes down. We then want to go ahead and skip a space of one, and we're going to place down a stone brick top slab. In that space, we're going to go ahead and then place down an anvil. Like so. Coming off the anvil to the side, we're going to place down a polished black stone wall, followed by one more wall back from it. We're going to delete this iron trap door here, which was part of the missile, and we're going to then place down two wither skeleton schools like this on top of the two walls there for our rear wheel. Lastly, we just want to go ahead and grab a stone brick slab. We're going to delete this quartz slab here, and we're going to place down a stone brick slab in its place like that for the landing gear. And very simply on the bottom of that, we're going to place down a lever and have that aim toward the landing gear like so. You'll take that same design, copy it over to the other side, and once you do, you'll have your landing gear here complete for the Supermarine Scimitar. And with that, that'll wrap up my tutorial here for this aircraft. If you guys do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be anything from a side of the build to me to my channel or this video if this does bring social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free user for a project you guys are working on over on Enjoy the Build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Um, in addition, again, big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Blissbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With it though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.